Hi everyone, Brianna Dignard here and welcome back to my channel. Does anybody remember like a couple of wild videos ago? Uh, I talked about a woman named Jeanne Villapru who is the founder of the aquarium and one of the animals she studied was called the Argonaut octopus. And I was going to include some information about the Argonaut octopus in that video, but when I started researching the Argonaut octopus, I learned that they're very, very weird and I didn't have enough time to talk about them in my Jeanne Villapru video, so I said later on down the road I would make a video about the Argonaut octopus. Well, guess what? Today is the day that we get a video about the wonderful and weird life about the Argonaut octopus. So let's get started. Argonaut octopi are also called paper nautiluses, which is a little bit of a misnomer because they're not actually nautiluses. Nautiluses are a different type of cephalopod. So they are related to octopi, but they are not. Nautiluses and octopi are not the same thing. So Argonaut octopuses are octopus, but they are all mollusks and they are all cephalopods, which is a group of mollusks that consist of octopi, squid, cuttlefish, and nautiluses. Other mollusks that we've talked about before on this channel include like scallops, clams, snails, slugs, all other types of mollusks. Um, they just happen to be in different classes or different groups that don't involve, that are not cephalopods. The Argona octopus is the world's only pelagic octopus, which means instead of like staying near the ocean floor or staying near coral reefs or rocky outcrops, they just swim around the open ocean. They just, they're just chilling, or not really chilling, they're just swimming around the open ocean. And they actually got their name of Argonaut octopus from, the, from Greek mythology in the myth of Jason and the Argonauts. If, you, if anybody is familiar with Greek mythology, I swear all of my knowledge comes from when I read Percy Jackson in elementary school. But the uh, Jason and the Argonauts show, sailed upon a ship called the Argo, right? And they were trying to look for the Golden Fleece and blah, 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 but anyhow, the Argonaut octopus gets its name because back in like 300 BC, when scientists knew even less about the Argonaut octopus than they do today, they thought that they would like basically just travel in their shell as little ships and then use their like tentacles as paddles to swim in the ocean. And that's how they got, they got around. And that's why you can see a lot of, if you Google Argonaut octopus, there's a lot of like weird images that kind of look like them sailing around in a boat and the boat being their shell. They don't actually move like that. They use a funnel near like kind of the front of, front of their face, if octopus can have a front of their face. And that funnel siphons water and pushes them through the water column, just how like squids move by jet propulsion as well. Crazy animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scientists recognize four different species of Argonaut octopi, although they do debate whether or not there are more because their shells are very, very, distinct and can have wide variations. So it's hard to tell like, oh, is this the same shell of a species we already know? Or is this like an entirely different species? Cause again, like in 300 BC, they didn't know a lot about them. In the 1800s when Jean Villapru was around, they knew a teensy bit more about them. And even today we still don't, we know a little bit more, but we still don't really know a lot. And the geographic region for Argon octopuses can be found in tropical and subtropical oceans, along the Indo-Pacific region, and along South America, and along the western coast of the United States. So they are found kind of globally, these different species, and they are what is known as sexually dimorphic. And I think I've mentioned this before, but I'll just go through it again. To be sexually dimorphic means that there is a difference in like physical physical appearance between the male and female of a species. So you often see this a lot in like the bird community. If you've ever seen like cardinals, the male cardinal is really bright red, while the female cardinal is more of a light tan or brown. That sexual dimorphism in color, the male and female are two different colors. In this case for the Argonaut octopus, the females make a shell, which is different than the males, and the females are also a lot bigger. In fact, about 30 times the size of the male. And scientists actually only know this because they have seen male Argonauts only like dead. Nobody's ever actually seen a live male Argonaut like in the earth, like in the ocean swimming around. And until I think the 1800s, nobody actually knew, or until very recently, nobody actually knew that there even was a male Argonaut octopus. So, <laughs> they're really weird. I suggest you go read more about them. They're just so strange. So like I mentioned, the females make these egg 
like these shells that are meant to protect their eggs and serve as defense. And up until the 1800s, scientists didn't actually even know if they made their own shells. They thought that they kind of stole them from other creatures like hermit crabs do. Until Jean Villepru came along with the invention of the aquarium and was able to observe live octopi in an aquarium and see them actually produce their own shell and put their eggs in it. So that was a major advance in the knowledge of just learning about these animals. And then what's even crazier than like the fact scientists didn't even know the male once existed or how different in size they are or these egg cases or all the other stuff I just talked about that's weird is their reproductive process is crazy. So the female will create that shell that I've been talking about this whole time, the paper thin shell using their tentacles that secrete a substance called calcite, that calcite makes up the shell. They will then capture air with inside of that shell to create what is called neutral buoyancy, or basically so that the shell with the, will basically like just stay in the same spot in the water column. It won't, bleh, it won't float, it won't sink anymore. It'll stay at the same spot. Then the females deposit their eggs into that egg case. Now the male comes along and instead of self-fertilizing, or instead of the male fertilizing the eggs using the male, the male actually has a specialized arm that it detaches and gives to the female containing the sperm. And the female, when the conditions are right, fertilizes the eggs in that shell. We're not really sure what happens to the male organ octopus after this dismemberment happens. We think he may die, we don't know. Scientists are still trying to figure that out. But really weird process and very interesting, just another interesting fact to add to these very interesting animals. In addition to serving as a like capsule to store their eggs in, to fertilize their eggs in, scientists also think that the shells serve as a potentially like protective or evolutionary mechanism, which is why you still see them around today. So like other octopi don't have shells on them, squid don't have external shells on them. And over time, they scientists think they used to like millions and millions of years ago. And over time through evolution, they no longer needed those shells. So they lost them or they, like octopi and squids have what is considered a shell inside of them called in a squid it's called squid it's called a quill but the argonaut octopus must have needed their shell for something for the eggs for protection and that's why it still exists today i hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about this weird and wild and interesting ocean critter that is the world's only pelagic octopus and still remains a mystery to scientists I had a lot of fun researching this video and just learning more and more like weird stuff about them as I looked up more and more information about them. Today's fun fact is one more weird fact about the Argonaut octopus, and that is that they will cling to seaweed, jellyfish, or each other in giant groups to travel across the ocean. And scientists think they do this as a protection mechanism and to conserve energy so they don't have to swim themselves. Pretty cool, right? So please be sure to drop that rating for the fun fact in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram. I post on YouTube every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciencey. Um, snails, slugs. So uh, these Argonaut octopus are somewhat related to Nautilus, but they are not Nautilus despite the fact that sometimes they are called paper Nautiluses. And, <laughs> oh jeez, this makes no sense. <laughs>